cotton a bit of loo. All righty, folks, here we are for another episode of Three Crazy Country Boys, and uh, one or two of us look like we're in the country. One of us is in a fake laboratory there getting ready to send off some uh, uh, very fast uh, uh, hydrons, right? <laughs> Anyhow, we're here with uh, my good buddy David. He is uh, the, uh, I don't know, are you the founder of the Olympic Peninsula Festival? Yeah, yeah, it was our kind of creation started last year awesome yeah i remember i i have not got out very much myself and you were very good at, at trying to get me up there and man i really wish i would have come just because i'd be that much further ahead at this point and it just seems like uh, it's really going big this year yeah it's amazing to see the growth you know from from last year to this year um the whole world of mycology seems like it's really boomed in the last three years just in general but oh yeah it's such a wonderful area for for fungi up here that it seems like something we should have been celebrating for years so what exactly is the uh, fungi festival so we're, we're trying to provide a platform to bring people together and, and learn about fungi, um, you know, and trying to be a really broad event to cover all the different and exciting aspects of mycology. So everything from cultivation, um, remediation, foraging, um, we have mycomaterials presentations, um, cooking demonstrations, um, people who are doing uh, animal mycophiles, so animals that have a mutualistic relationship with fungi. Um, we have a, uh, a local guy doing a mycorrhizal relationship uh, presentation and it specializes in mycorrhizal relationships with trees. So uh, just a really broad event to try and get people, um, you know, involved and excited about you know, mushrooms and mycology. Definitely. So, so last year, was it, was it all of that as well? Or were you kind of uh, doing like some of the foraging, uh, I forget what they call it, where they go and they get a bunch of stuff and bring it back and look at all the different uh, varieties and whatnot? Yeah, you know, it was pretty uh, presentation focused last year as well. And we did do, um, you know, a pretty wide range of um, presentations. Um, but, you know, kept it a lot more local and we really got fortunate last year with people just willing to volunteer their time to help make, you know, make it happen. Um, you know, when we first pitched the idea to, you know, local government and stuff, it was kind of we needed to prove interest before really getting uh, too established. And so they kind of encouraged us to do last year's on a really short timeline and kind of uh, minimal budget just to see if there was interest really there. And, um Fortunately, it took off um, and incredibly quick, and we sold out really fast last year. Um, awesome. Everybody seemed to really enjoy themselves, and um, so yeah, it um, really proved interest for sure. Um, and then we've just been able to be in, in you know a single conference room into a you know a whole fairgrounds, um, you know, with multiple presentations happening all at the same time, a full merchants hall, um, food court. Um, beer garden, kitchen space, um, camping. So, <laughs> yeah, sounds like you pretty much got it all. I mean, you throw in uh, you throw in some laser tag and some uh, video games, and man, you got everybody yes. covered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. And the more that's finally starting to get out, you know, about the event because we wanted to try and build as much of the program before we really started promoting it as we could. And, um, you know, so now we keep getting more and more wonderful people reaching out and really excited to come and participate and um, help spread the, the good word of mycology. So for the people that aren't in the Pacific Northwest, what is the Olympic Peninsula? Because a lot of folks are probably like, eh, what is this thing? Yeah, so we're kind of in the far northwest corner of Washington State, um, uh, surrounded by the Olympic National Park. Um, you know, so it's just a, a wonderful um, ecosystem here with a, a really diverse um, range of uh, yeah, different ecosystems. We go from sea level to ski level, um, and I think about 17 miles. Oh, wow. um, so we go from being right on the Strait of Juan de Fuca at the border of Canada um, to Hurricane Ridge, um, which does skiing and snowboarding in the um, off season. So 
Oh yeah. Uh, winter, winter season, I guess. Um, so, you know, we have a, from surfing to, to skiing, um, <laughs> but everything. Interesting. So, so that peninsula, it kind of sticks out to into the ocean just a little bit, right? So there's like a, you get a lot of that uh, moist wind all the time. So I imagine it's, it's a big rainforest through there, eh? Yeah, you know, and actually, you know, where we live, we're kind of like right on the, uh, I'm a little west of Port Angeles, which is in the Olympic Peninsula area. Um, and we're like right on the edge of the rainforest. Um, and as you go west, they get about an inch of rain more per mile um, from that point west. Oh, wow. So you get really <laughs> wet as you get out towards yeah. kind of forks. And... Good luck starting a fire when you're camping there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the whole rainforest is a really known section of Olympic National Park. It's just a beautiful, um, really big old growth trees. And, um, so, yeah, we've got a lot, of, a lot of really wonderful natural beauty here. Oh, yeah. So what, what was your uh, expertise that led you into starting this festival? Where were you focused initially? Yeah, so, you know, we have a farm um, up here in Port Angeles, Maddie's Mushrooms. Um, and so we grow gourmet mushrooms for um, kind of some of the natural food stores in the area, restaurants, um, do the farmer's markets, uh, supply grow kits to a couple of the little garden stores in the area. Um and so that's kind of where we had um, pushed to get involved in it um, through the farmer's market. It just seemed like we had so many people coming up to us asking questions that we didn't necessarily feel like we could answer, but maybe could help provide a platform for those questions to be answered. And, um, you know, thought they were important questions. Um, yeah. So really love to see people getting excited and interested in, in all forms of mushrooms. But cultivation was definitely kind of my my entry point and um you know i love to grow and eat right many mushrooms yeah. as i can that's uh, that's definitely a big thing going on now i think uh, a lot of people want local they want really good stuff and they want to talk to the person that is is putting that food on their table and yeah. i think uh, a lot of our community seems to be uh, catered towards that yeah well you know and with mushrooms even so specifically they're so fragile um that really, if you can work with somebody local to your community and, um, you know, you're always, I think, going to get a better product when it comes to comes to mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember when I first started, I was talking to a, a grower, um, Lowell Dietz, who um, is going to do some of the presenting at this year's festival. And he was saying, he's like, yeah, if I packed my mushrooms up and sent them to the same address that, that some of these come from, they'd probably look the same as those ones. You know, they only look better because I was able to to bring them in here and deliver them. And, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. I hear that a lot from folks, especially with store-bought mushrooms and say, ah, oh, well, this is just such garbage. I know it was foraged in the wild, but man, it just looks terrible. And you just have to realize a lot of those places that do that, they go through five or six hands before they ever get in front yeah. of you. And yeah. they don't look like they did <laughs> when that person went out, picked them and sold them because I guarantee you, every one of those guys does it in a, in a way that they would take it home and say, well, here's a great fungus for me to eat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I hate when I go in there and I see them all like suffocated in a plastic bag in the grocery store. <laughs> People right. say they hate mushrooms. This is probably why. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just, it's like anything else fresh, even our, uh, our fruit and our produce that we get, it really isn't fresh. I mean, it, it is kind of, but I mean, they, it took a few weeks to get here and they usually pick it you know, before it's ripe. And I don't yeah. think you can really do that with fungus. You just, you pick it when it's ripe and it has a shelf life. It has. Yeah. <laughs> but who knows soon they may find some nice uh, elements to spray on it and keep them fresh longer. Like they have our, <laughs> our fruits and veggies. <laughs> Wrap them in tighter plastic, like cucumbers. <laughs> right. All right. So what's your, uh, what's your background? Are you kind of from the country? Did you move out to the country and start your farm or what's, what's that about? Yeah. So I'm kind of raised from in this area, which is kind of country, country area out here in Port Angeles. Um, uh, born in Eastern Washington, but spent most of my life uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I feel like being kind of in that small town vibe, about everyone I went to school with was like, I can't wait to get out of here. And so I did the typical, uh, you know, adulthood thing and 
ran across the country and lived in Florida for a, probably a little over a year, but just couldn't wait to get back. Um, you know, not that it wasn't beautiful down there in its own way. It's just, this is home and love right. being in the woods and hiking and, um, being so close to the water and, um, it really is just a, a awesome place to live. And, um, you know, now I have a family here and a, a three-year-old daughter that we, um, you know, have the farm, the farming with, and, um, we live really close to a state park that's right on the water and we can go do tide pooling and, um, just feel real fortunate to be raising a, a kid in this, this kind of an area. Yeah. It's very beautiful up there. My, yeah. uh, my great uncle lived there for a number of years. And so I, I visited a few times and it just was, a, it was really fun to be able to, to go out on the, the dock and the bay and, and, uh, you know, fish and then, then go back inland and, and, uh, not even feel like I was right on the ocean. It was, it was pretty interesting, you know? Yeah. But anyhow, so, uh, what about, uh, your outdoor activities? Are you a hunter, a fisher or any of that stuff or just a farmer? No. I used to do some fishing. Um, but, uh, we've been plant-based now for a number of years. Um, uh, <laughs> now was that a, a just a general health decision or did, was there something that drove that um mostly i guess general health decision and kind of uh um you know personally i'm just not the person that could ever i always wanted i like the idea of being able to sustain myself um and i'm not the person that could go out and, and hunt just uh <laughs> fishing was one thing but hunting is another it uh, is it's not easy me, i just <laughs> um and so, you know, I can, I can sustain, you know, grow what I can eat, you know, with me and plant-based and uh, at least a good portion of it. And so I do really, really like the idea of that. We eat a lot of mushrooms. And, Definitely. Uh, so yeah. you're probably pretty well versed on which mushrooms have, you know, high protein and high nutrition contents versus your standard uh, button mushroom you buy in the store. <laughs> try, try to be, but you know, my wife's definitely, um, you know, she's been plant-based and been, um, you know, in like Olympic weightlifting courses at the same time. So very knowledgeable on how to um, stay well nutritioned while eating a plant-based diet. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I think it's probably pretty obvious I'm an avid hunter. I do have <laughs> some, some horns behind me. <laughs> but, Mostly. you know, you might be surprised to find out that uh, it's not all... Uh, easy peasy and no emotions when, when uh, we go out. That is one thing that uh, I am a very compassionate hunter and I think everyone should be if they yeah. are going to hunt. So, Well, and know, I definitely I think that if you are going to eat meat, like hunting is that's definitely the much more um, like ethical form of doing it. Um, right. Going out and providing your own meat and um, yeah, that are raising your own. Um, yeah. Definitely. So when you, uh, when you are plant, plant based, does that mean you don't, don't eat fish or any of that as well? Yeah, not anymore. Not for, man, it's been four years or so now, um, which is pretty wild um, for me because it was definitely raised on a very heavy kind of meat and, um, you know, home cooked meal uh, diet. Um, but yeah, at one point, like I said, just really kind of sparked the interest in it and then you know had a lot of people like oh you'll never you know, you'll never be able to do that and um so i just kind of felt the challenge and um <laughs> felt like i was always kind of feeling a little better personally you know i think everybody kind of has their own you know diets um and for, for me it seemed to work really well and some really good energy and um yeah Good. Yeah, I actually, I actually kind of fear I may end up there myself. I, I fear it because I would have to change dramatically in order to, to accomplish it. But mm -hmm. I've seen where my uncle has terrible digestive issues, and he was miserable for most of his life. And he was like me, an avid hunter, an avid fisher. That was like all he did. You know, yeah. he, was, he was my idol for many years uh, growing up, and. Uh, found out that pretty much all of his health issues were were based around that and he didn't figure it out until he had like three months straight of kidney stones mm. i think like one month he had 300 stones <laughs> oh, man. like dude 
if I have that in my lifetime, I would yeah. just say, take out whatever creates them. I don't need it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want three, let alone 300. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think the, it's probably a matter of having diversity in your diet. Yeah. You know? And I think uh, there's a lot of diversity probably within plants themselves. And yeah. there isn't a lot of diversity within the meats. So we get concentrates of specific, uh, you know, chemicals. And if you don't eat right altogether and you eat all one thing, man, it's, it's not so great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, another great push is that there's not a lot of vegan, especially up here, vegan fast food options. And so it just like takes that off the table. You know, when I wasn't, oh, yeah. when I wasn't eating vegan, it was like, oh, well, I could just stop in and grab a quick, quick burger, you know, from wherever. Now it's like, well, that's just off the table. So I guess I'll <laughs> right. go get some carrots. <laughs> yeah, I found out I was allergic to wheat not too long ago. Mm, and yeah. I, I was just feeling like death. And same thing. Like, man, if you go go ahead and go and try finding something in a fast food restaurant that doesn't have gluten yeah. or wheat, you know, <laughs> yeah. it might you might if you get a salad. But even so, they're all prepared in the same area. <laughs> that's not good uh, gonna oh he's gonna try and connect to the phone hotspot so we might see him back anyhow we'll edit this stuff out <laughs> so back to uh back to the olympic peninsula and this uh the, the this year's fungi festival so what uh what do you think the catalyst was that brought it, so many people in just folks that came in last year wanting to to promote it yeah, you know, we did, we definitely last year reached out to a lot of people um, initially just kind of trying to, to get established um, uh, and then just kind of had, you know, really fortunate connections throughout, you know, kind of the weird way the, the mycology community seems to be um, where, you know, it seems like this person knows that person and this person knows that person. And, right. um, you know, so next thing you know, just more and more people start reaching out and, you um, Eric Lohman uh, has been a really huge help in getting us connected with some really cool people for um, for this year. Uh, Roger Rabbit, for one, really excited to uh, you know, get him out and about and at an event and give people the opportunity to, to meet somebody like that that's kind of been around so long and helping so many people get their start. Right. Yeah, and so where is Eric at? Is he local as well, or is that someone you meet on online? Yeah, so he's with Maine Cap and Stem, um, the Micah Wizards. Um. So Maine Cap and Stem. So I've seen Maine. them on Facebook. I don't yeah. know. I don't know that I've actually talked to him. That is one thing that is hard to maintain is is everyone's names. You know, we've yeah. got all of our Myco companies. And of course, if you're on Facebook, you know how it goes. Some of them get deleted and they have mm. to come back with new names. And <laughs> so it's good to good to hear one every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's been around, you know, for a long time. And I think they do primarily now, um, you know, a lot of spawn production for, for gourmet farms and stuff like that um, that come from the East Coast, the uh, main area. Um, yeah, so really excited. Yeah. To There's quite a few folks over there. You know, I, uh, I was talking to uh, Geeky about being on the show as well. And he's, mm -hmm. he's kind of over in that area. He's, uh, yeah. I think he's in Ohio, which is for us on the west coast it's pretty close to that all that area but you know there's a there's like these hubs of mycology and uh you know i think a lot of folks see the pacific northwest as one for us and certainly yeah. one for wood lovers uh, yeah. i don't know if you go out and do any of that kind of foraging or not but you know i i try um you know we in the <laughs> you know being an avid hiker i definitely love to forage as well um you know, at least for, for me and my family, uh, so we're always looking for all the different different mushrooms and new mushrooms. And up here, I feel like always finding uh, something you've never seen before or come across and right. trying to dig to find out what it is. Um, but yeah, we get some pretty good 
um, some of the trails up here where they do some some alder chipping and things like that, get some pretty good wood lover patches going on them. So have you ever found any really cool looking mushrooms or bucket list mushrooms? You know, nothing real. Uh, you know, I, I, the bear's head that we found last year was pretty exciting, um, mostly just because it was so close to our house and then really a, a pretty nice um, uh, bear's head. I've always grown the lion's mane and just never found a, a native variety out here. Yeah, so, I've never found one fresh, but I, I yeah. saw a bear's head uh, one time and went to take it and it just turned to, to mush as soon as I tried to cut it. <laughs> yeah. I was really amazed that this one had uh, made it uh, without somebody else messing with it because it was right on the side of a trail, kind of on a saw cut log. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of yeah, we right. see chicken of the woods everywhere. And I yeah. think the same thing, you know, here's this great big orange flag, you know, how has nobody <laughs> seen this yet? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, so let's get back to our, uh, our fungi festival. I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, uh, but I heard you say you had Rockefeller coming this time. Is that accurate? Yeah. So Alan's somebody that we reached out to last year. Um, and he just ended up by the time we had touched base with him was already engaged. And so, um, you know, with another event. And so we just kind of kicked the conversation to this year. And so he was one of the first people that we really, um, you know, got on board for this year's event. And, um, he's going to do a really cool, uh, bioluminescent and glowing fungi presentation, um, followed by a UV walk, um, that same evening on Saturday where people can kind of go out and see if we can find any bioluminescent or glowing activity in the woods there. Um, awesome. and then also do kind of a, a more basic, uh, foraging panel on Sunday morning and then, uh, a photography focused walk that afternoon. That's probably what I was trying to think of earlier, where they go and collect uh, little bins of various uh, varieties of mushrooms they pick yeah. up and try and ID them. Huh? Yeah, you know, and we are going to, you know, the event, we've always thought it was kind of important to have, um, you know, ticketed and free access. Um, so we will have um, like public access spaces and have a ID table set up in that area as well so that people can kind of, either bring in fungi that they found to see if we can get an ID on them or come look at fungi that have been found in the area um, and get more familiar with what is growing. Uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of times it's much more uh, easy to get an idea of what you're looking for if you can kind of see it in person and just look right. at it in a guidebook. So what are any other uh, big events you're excited for or uh, for Rays, uh, kind of like that? We have, um, you know, the Friday night dinner we're really excited to, to do, um, you know, talking with some really amazing chefs on kind of what the, the dinner is going to look like, but have a really um, great mushroom focused dinner planned um, that will kind of take place alongside a, a panel discussion on psilocybin. Oh, okay. um, and, and that panel um, has just really grown to include some wonderful people. Um, we have the health officer for Jamestown uh, tribe, which is a tribe local to this area, um, who's going to participate. Um, and previously, he was the Clallam County health officer, which is our local, um, local county here. Um, so really uh, great to have him on board. Um, we have uh, professors from University of Washington, um, Larry Norris coming up from Oakland uh, in the decriminalized nature movement, uh, people who uh, work with Oregon on their kind of legalization stuff and um, have a lot of input from that process. Uh, so we have a really wonderful panel that's going to take place, um, I think be pretty special, focused on yeah. Psilocybin. I wish that there were two of me so that I could go and watch everything while also trying to show people stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So really excited to have that. Um, Sam Shoemaker, um, he was kind of a recent person um, to reach out, but I'm really excited to have him here. Um, he's doing more like myco art and myco material stuff, it sounds like. Um, cool. He's bringing a couple uh, or at least one mycelium surfboard that he's been working on. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, hopefully should have some kind of videos of them in use by that point in time. He's also working on a, a mycelium kayak um, that he has some, you know, like a first first sea trip planned in it here pretty soon across like the Catalina Channel, I think. 
Huh. Um, so that's that's possible. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just think I feel like I've been out of touch with a lot of this stuff. It sounds like there's a lot of new stuff on the horizon and, and maybe uh, getting into these events like that. You start learning a lot more and getting exposed to more people and learn about the awesome stuff going on out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, um, you know, just hope to constantly evolve and incorporate more. Um, you know, we've reached out to the people that were doing like the mycelium coffins um, and hope to eventually get them involved. Um, some wonderful people that we hope to have next year that will do kind of, um, you know, historic uses of mushrooms by indigenous tribes. Um, you know, so just kind of constantly looking to add more. So no matter how long you've been into mushrooms, there's the, the opportunity to come learn something at this event. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's something that you, uh, you really can't get enough of, you know, everybody here, we, we try and learn as fast as we can, it seems. And then you like hit this wall, like, well, I think I've learned all I can, but there's all these little rabbit holes to go off on. And I think I just heard about four or five more I need to look into. Yeah. To look into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know, I think that's, I really think, you know, mushrooms have so much potential for our world long term, whether it be the, you know, the healing aspects from medicinal mushrooms in general, or specifically um, the psilocybin aspect of healing with mushrooms. Um, you know, mycomaterials, uh, just a lot of really wonderful things that, that uh, it seems like we can gain from working with mushrooms. And um, specifically think if we can start, you know, teaching our kids more about mycology at a young age and getting the young creative minds of our worlds kind of thinking about mushrooms um, from the start, yeah. we might really come up with some, some exciting and wonderful things. I think so. You know, Andrew here, he's actually uh, down in Georgia. So okay. they, uh, they have a big deal going on now, the uh, Georgia Mushroom Festival. So I don't know uh, how similar that is to, uh, uh, to the Olympic Peninsula Festival, but if he's still here, he can tell us. No, he's not still here. I, I, think, so. <laughs> I think, um, you know, we have a really wonderful um, social media person, um, that's actually, I think, going to be at that festival this year. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, yeah, but the uh, um, Bright Light Social Media is uh, Courtney Nesler. She does our, our social media uh, and marketing. And awesome. She's actually going to attend the that mushroom festival, so pretty excited. So what what is the Georgia Mushroom Festival about, Andrew? Is it similar sounding to the uh, Olympic Peninsula Festival with pretty much everything incorporated fungi? Yeah, it's it's got a little bit of everything. Um, I've only gone a couple of years. Uh, I've there's always uh, classes with Rockefeller and stuff like that. Like they'll do night hikes and stuff like that. Um, a lot of uh, cultivation classes and stuff too. There's a few panels, but not as diverse as uh, David is saying here. Yeah, yeah. I wondered. Uh... I always kind of pictured them as like these hippie fests that I've seen, pardon my lack of better description, but where people just basically go out and camp in the woods and get high on mushrooms. So, yeah. uh, you know, I've had a really, a really jaded view of what they were until recently. So yeah. I'm glad to be being corrected here. You know, I feel like even uh, my first introduction with psychedelic societies, I was pretty surprised. Um, uh, kind of have that same view, like, oh, it's just like a party spot for people. And, um, you know, I I had been more focused in the the gourmet side of things, getting into mycology again, you know, had definitely um, messed around um, with the psilocybin side of it when I was uh, younger, but uh, focused on the gourmet farm until I had a, a loss of a sibling. And that kind of, for some reason, sparked a uh, motivation to look back into psilocybin and um, ended up using that to kind of help with the processing of that. And I felt like it was such a, um, a powerful tool in that moment um, that it was kind of motivated to seek out some psychedelic societies. And we had a really wonderful community in Port Townsend. And, um, you know, I think when I first went to a gathering there, I was kind of expecting this like group of young kids all looking to party. And it was just a 
you know, wide range of people, all different ages. You know, there was people who, um, you know, retired doctors to, um, you know, construction workers like myself, uh, um, you know, just so many different people and ages and backgrounds. And it was really cool just to see everybody coming together with this really positive vibe and all more looking for like a, a healing feeling versus like a party vibe, I guess, you know, like just wanting to, to live a better life and not necessarily like go crazy, I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah that, that was something I had to learn myself. Uh, you know, I've, I've been around mushrooms my whole life and I've taken them quite a bit, but very rarely have I ever taken them for anything but to have fun. Yeah. And, and over the last few years, I've, I've found that that really isn't to what I feel the goal of them is or the, the purpose of that particular tool, but it is yeah. nice to have it in your arsenal for when you need it. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I always, uh, you know, as much as I advocate for the healing potential, I will also always say that there shouldn't be, uh, you know, there's also something very healing about just having fun, you know, and we all, yeah. I think all need to smile a little bit more in this world. <laughs> so, right. And the, I think the the general organization, a lot of us are, uh, I don't know if you want to call us OCD or if we're just kind of uh, a little bit uh, special, but, you know, we've all, we all like to get in here and focus on this stuff to distract ourselves from the, whether it's the real world or the, the pain that we've encountered there, you know, so it is definitely a, an immense tool to have for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it, it have um, been really cool connecting with, you know, people and, um, you know, from that aspect of it um, and hearing all the kind of stories and um, really makes me, I, I think, hopeful for the future. You know, again, like I said, I think there, there's a lot of benefits that can come from mushrooms for our world and um, definitely hopeful that that's, that's one of them. So are you able to go myco full time or are you still working construction or what? Yeah, no, I still work construction, um, you know, part time at this point in time. Um, you know, we have a really getting close, I think, to, you know, being able to, to support a family off of just the mushroom world. But, um, you know, I have a really great employer at the same time that works with me really well and uh, have a family to support. And so that consistency and knowing that's there is also very uh, beneficial and hard to let go of. And, oh, um, yeah. Well, it's yeah. a hard, hard life, but <laughs> probably not all that much harder than farm life, you know? So if you can yeah. make the uh, living off of it, then right. Good deal. Yeah. So uh, the construction I do is for uh, like a cannabis farm in Washington, actually. Oh, okay. I used to do like more broad construction um, houses and stuff like that. And um, got connected to one of the uh, larger cannabis grows in our area and they ended up kind of pulling me away from that to just do all the construction uh, stuff that they have to take care of because they're kind of in a like a constant state of growth. So, so is that uh, kind of like you're, you're putting in uh, water access or what, what kind of things are you actually doing? I can't picture much on a, on a cannabis farm to build. We just finished building a new structure, you know, so kind of just trying to, yeah, do a lot of different outfitting in there. Um, yeah. Um, from you know, plumbing hookups to plant beds and um, ducting for ventilation. And, uh, I got you. Kind of customizing the interiors, making them perfect instead of just a blank slate. Yeah, work. yeah, because it was kind of a big empty steel steel building when we first kind of went in there and can separate and into a bunch of different rooms and um, you know, getting each one set up on their own system. Uh, kind of like most things the the cannabis industry is going pretty automated or towards an automated direction, you know? And so, uh, yeah. Refining their skills. Kinda... I've seen some, uh, some interesting grows like that, the can of grows and, uh, you know, you, you, you're pushing your little cart and you got to go over hoses and stuff in some of them and other ones, you know, it's all flowing and automated. And yeah. so I imagine it's good to have somebody able to uh, build that into your design and just say, Hey, I want this to work better. Can you do this? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and they've been, you know, been in it since kind of the medical days and one of the, the growers up here that I feel like was able to actually make that successful transition because um, it was kind of a weird weird thing where it seemed like a lot of a lot of people who had been in the cannabis industry when it went legal ended up you know 
uh, losing out or unable to kind of succeed, um, you know, hard to keep up with the, the finances, um, you know, yeah. that some of these other people had, I think. Um, so they've been uh, really, um, you know, active at, uh, you know, putting out a good quality product and, you know, keeping keeping up with growing to, to fill the need. And so, uh, you know, they've learned a lot. It seems like and kind of really have the process dialed down. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's like that old saying, money talks and bullshit walks. Yeah. You know, it, it sucks because you can be the best at something. And if you don't have the money to invest and you don't have the knowledge of where to put that money to invest, then you won't find the success that other folks with money will, regardless of their experience or intelligence levels, you know, and that's not trying to insult the folks that are, that do have money out there doing it. There are some very smart, very uh, well-funded people out there that are putting up a hell of a, a standard for anybody else to uh, uh, compete with. And so it gives us all goals, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's one real, you know, like I think hope for, uh, you know, kind of work with the the decriminalized nature movement out of um, Oakland um, and hopes to accomplish a decriminalized, uh, decriminalized, uh, decriminalization measure for uh, entheogens in this area um, and just kind of hope to always provide that protection for people to be able to, to grow um, at the community level. Um, yeah, you know, and not just have it be in the hands of these licensed, licensed places, which have their 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 place. But I still think if you want to be able to grow your own medicine, that that's a really, really special and empowering thing. And um, you know, not everybody can afford to go these other routes. And mushrooms can be something that people can either forage for themselves pretty easily with a little bit of education, or um, grow for themselves. And I think that should be a you know a legal or uh, Definitely. I think, I think the, you know, you kind of touched on it with the talking about the entheogens, like there, there's more than just mushrooms. There's more than just your LSD and uh, the, the common drugs that people are using to microdose and to get, get their heads straight now. And uh, a lot of it all comes from, from natives and, and from native populations that use this stuff to yeah. as medicine and to get right. And, uh, probably to have fun too. I mean, I imagine there's people like that in every group, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to see because, you know, I see folks out there that are healing themselves uh, from years and years of trauma, you know, and uh, there's a lot of us out there that won't reach out for help and have to yeah. try and do some stuff internally. So yeah. it's amazing uh, to have access to this stuff. Yeah, we, you know, we have a really large uh, veteran population in Clallam County. Um, you know, I think we have kind of a really big retirement area in, in Squim, and I think a lot of, you know, retired veterans and stuff like that, but um, really high percentage per capita of veterans in this area. And I um, know that uh, group specifically seems to have a lot of potential for benefit, um, you know, with oh, these, yeah. we've been able to connect with some. Well, that's definitely one that it's uh, close to home for me. I, I'm not an actual veteran. I was in the, uh, in the army for a little while, but uh, I didn't ever get veterans benefits, but a lot of the folks that I know have my, my family is uh, very military and I've seen, you know, I've seen people come home and strong people, very strong people yeah. and uh, they need help. And they don't know how to ask for it. And certainly a lot of them are uh, like that group of folk, folks I'm talking about that just need to do things on their own sometimes or need somebody equally as strong and tough to say, hey, listen, man, you should give this stuff a try. It sucks. Yeah. You might tear up. You might feel like you're not as strong as you were when it happens. But when you walk away from it, stronger than you ever been, you know, and uh, I think a lot of it, too, is the community. You know, coming in and uh, supporting one another and trying to learn this uh, uh, these different these different growing patterns for different mushrooms or different uh, medicines or whatever you're getting at. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, so many of them have amazing health benefits. Um, you know, Robert Rogers, uh, wonderful herbalist and author. Um, one of his favorite books of mine is The Fungal Pharmacy. 
um, this really thorough book that goes into kind of like every different uh, mushroom variety, the medicinal benefits that they have, and then how to kind of get those benefits from each mushroom. Um, and he's going to come this year to the festival as well and kind of do the medicinal mushrooms presentation. Um, but that's something that, you know, uh, they all seem to have some sort of a, a potential for, for healing in some way, whether it be, you know, anti-inflammatory or antibacterial, and, uh, you know, brain health, uh, anti-tumor, anti-cancer, uh, just seems yeah. to be uh, a lot of really, really great health benefit potentials. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of what drove me to, to dive deep is uh, right prior to getting into, to the actual cultivation uh, my mother passed away from cancer and I knew, you know, some things about cannabis and uh, silver nitrate, things like that, that I could have, could have helped her with to, to extend her life potentially. Excuse me. She didn't necessarily want that. So we didn't go down that route, but it always made me wonder, you know, whether or not things like that could help people that I knew. And so I wanted to have that power, that ability to, to say, well, Hey, maybe you should try this. And, and I don't know about you, but uh, I ended up taking a bunch of different mushroom supplements. I tried microdosing, mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately I backed into uh, using the a five mushroom blend tincture uh, because I liked so many of the gourmets and the the mental effects. You know, the yeah. uh, the brain power increase and the lack of brain fog that we get as we we get older, especially if. Uh, uh, psychedelics aren't your only uh, recreational choice you know? like mine was cannabis for many yeah. years so you got a lot of brain power to reverse uh, the damage to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know uh, yeah and it's really nice to be able to you know uh, grow and provide some of that for the for the community as well you know that's one of the um, things we love about you know, having a farm here is being able to provide you know a healthy um good food source for people in this area and uh, just left the, the, the food bank right before sitting down for this. And, um, you know, it's really special. We donate there um, pretty much every week and took them a bunch of lion's mane this week. And they were really, really excited and just amazing feedback. And, um, you know, it's nice to be able to kind of make it accessible to everybody in the community because I think I, everybody should be able to access, you know, good, healthy foods. And um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and that that uh, lion's mane, you know, that it seems to be one of the biggest uh, ones I see out, and definitely not only does it taste damn good, it uh, it gives you that mental clarity and and clean energy. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's um, surprising because we get a lot of people that come up to our farmers market booth that don't even uh, realize it has like culinary, I guess, uh, been you know, a culinary right. side to it, you know, at this point. Do I dry it up and grind it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's delicious. Like, oh, I just knew it was good for your brain. I didn't know it was good to eat. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. in fact, some of the folks that I know uh, knew before the uh, sort of fad health uh, things with Lion's Mane specifically, that's what they wanted it for was mm -hmm. they would use it as a substitute for seafood in their in their chowders and their yeah. uh, soups and whatnot. And heard it was pretty dang good that way. Yeah, well, you know, we've really, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things because it is kind of a newer one in some of the restaurants. Um, like, well, I've never worked with it before. I don't know what to do with it. And um, I've kind of been like trying to encourage different restaurants. Like if you just try it, it's so trendy right now that I think people would be really excited. And, um, one of yeah. the swim restaurants, Wild Goddess, they've been um, using a lot of it in a bunch of different dishes seems like everything they make with it is just a hit and um, people are really excited to, to come eat it and um, you know, in a, a way that's prepared for them and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that you could probably take it and process it much like tofu. I mean, if you were going to go for the simplest, easiest way to incorporate it into your, your uh, existing recipes. Yeah. You know, and that, that or my wife's gotten to where she'll just chop it up really fine. Um, sometimes, you know, we make a uh, breakfast burritos a lot of times in the mornings that uh, they kind of have like a tofu and a bunch of different things in them and other mushrooms. And she just kind of chops the lion's mane up real fine and sautés it in there. And I really like eating it that way because you get it first thing in the morning. So you kind of get that brain boost from it. And, um, yeah, 
I wonder if it would work like uh, like breading. A buddy of mine was talking about taking uh, chicken of the woods and mm. grinding it into powder and then using it to rub in well meat. So <laughs> yeah. you could uh, you could use a, a a patty of some other sort. Yeah, new ones are, but same deal it gives it that nice. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that flavor of chicken of the woods. It's chickeny i guess <laughs> i don't know it's an odd flavor yeah yeah good yeah i know i've seen people too that don't just they, they say they dry it and then grind it up into a powder and just use the powder as a thickener for different things and i thought that was a pretty oh. cool idea for adding flavor and like thickening gravies and that would be nice because yeah. i i can't use flour so yeah. if i could use lion's mane powder or something else you know chicken of the woods powder might work pretty good for that yeah so. Maybe I'll do that. That's yeah. a great idea. <laughs> yeah, another big uh, festival that happens right before the um, the fungi festival up here is the Dungeness Crab Fest. Oh yeah, we've kind of worked with them since you know the beginning, just to kind of have somebody to bounce ideas off of and stuff like that. And, um, really figured we can use it to um, network with the foodie aspect of it, you know, because mushrooms are such a, a culinary um thing you know anymore people right. are really excited about I'm them picturing a, a a lion's mane crusted crab puff that yeah that's very good. <laughs> that's where we are we're gonna set up at the the crab fest with the booth for the fungi festival and do uh lion's mane crab cakes and uh lobster mushroom lobster rolls oh yeah yeah so what what do you grow there is it is it just lion's mane at maddie's no, so we do, you know, a lot of oyster in lion's mane, um, and then shiitake, chestnut, um, and those are the four we primarily focus on. We do do some, like, queen oyster, some people call them, or a black pearl oyster that's kind of that hybrid oyster variety. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, the focus right now is just those four. Um, and have you found mine. that to... Uh pretty a pretty tough competitive market or is are you kind of stand out there on your own yeah right now we can't keep up almost we need more space um kind of what we're trying to figure out now and the festival's grown to take up so much time that now it's just like well let's just wait till after october to figure it out but um you know we have uh you know been really fortunate with restaurants reaching out to us just to try and get um you know local mushrooms Mostly because we're we're one of the the few people up here doing it right now, um, you know. Versus like the vegetable farms, kind of having to compete with all the other farms. Um, so yeah, we uh, the the big casino, Seven Cedars Casino, just uh, east of Port Angeles. We supply their restaurant with mushrooms and oh yeah, um, you know, kind of restaurants all the way from there through Port Angeles and um, like I said, Country Air, the big natural food store in town. We do. Um, there's shiitake, oyster, and lion's mane there. Um, but right now we kind of have our room almost, you know, maxed out, um, you know, for each, each cycle. Um, you know, we have one fruiting space that we're fruiting all of them in. Um, that was kind of originally yeah. set up as like a, oh, temporary space and has been kind of turned into a more permanent structure <laughs> than, than originally intended, but it's doing its job and, um, know cranking mushrooms out so well hey at least if you need to expand you know you can build it yourself and say <laughs> as much as you can these days <laughs> yeah yeah we'd really like to do some um you know some agricultural hoop houses um at some point just kind of trying to figure out where and what exactly that would look like but up here like you were kind of touching on before it's such a perfect habitat for it the building a you know a real structure is so much more cost involved and uh, a lot more permitting um, and it's pretty easy to get away with using a hoop house in this area uh, or such a mild climate that uh, oh yeah do a couple of those like double poly walled hoop houses and uh, be really nice to start kind of separating things a little bit because you know right now it's more trying to find which zone is best for the shiitakes in the room and where the lions may do better and oysters they don't seem to really care where you put them they grow <laughs> no they just grow what. a little bit different you know wherever yeah. you put them. <laughs> like wait is that an oyster it kind of looks like a trumpet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and i don't know what it is sometimes when you get just that one you know 
every time I try and take those ones down to market with me or something like that and put it on display. But it seems like once in a while, you'll get a kit that instead of growing a cluster of mushrooms, it's just one big mushroom starts coming out of there. And right. it's, you know, it's bigger than my head. <laughs> it's like, wow, can I clone this or is this never going to do this again? <laughs> I know the blue, you know, it's really neat seeing kind of the variations in color and stuff. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, I tried the blues and pinks and kings, and yeah. uh, I'll tell you, I did not care for the pinks. I grew them inside in my kitchen. They were okay. Like, they looked beautiful. They grew well, but, man, they stunk. I don't know <laughs> if it was the variety I had or what, but it, it smelled like it came from the ocean. I, you know, that's the the one that I feel like I hear most people, like, don't like. I have... A couple of customers that are like, are you ever going to grow those pink oysters again? We just love those things. But um, yeah, the, a lot of people seem like they don't really like those ones. And then really short shelf life, it seems like, do on some of the pink. Hmm. Well, that should make them better, right? I yeah. Mean, <laughs> one of my favorites is uh, the Shaggy Mane. Oh, boy, yeah. As soon as you cut those things, they start turning into like this goop. <laughs> you know, don't leave them <laughs> yeah, the for first, too long. The first time I picked a bunch of those, I thought I could put them in the fridge. And I picked like a big paper bag of them and put them in the fridge. And the next day, that bag was just like this yeah. black liquid coming out of here. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing, only I didn't use a bag. I set oh, them yes. in my back seat underneath my rear seat and i'm like ah they'll be fine till tomorrow morning I, i'll get them in the morning they'll be cool i'll chop them up and have them breakfast no i had a black stain on my gray carpet <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my you know my daughter she's three and she just loves mushrooms everything about mushrooms um she loves when we go out looking for them um probably one of the first ones to find them it seems like a lot of times too because she's right, right down there um, so she, she loves going out foraging, um, but then loves to go, you know, help me pick mushrooms or helps, tries to help me weigh them up or, um, you know, I've let her try and do lab work with me before and she, uh, can take a spore swab and, um, That's awesome. and she, she loves to get involved, but she also loves to take mushrooms and hide them in her room. <laughs> <laughs> so the other day we were cleaning her room and there's this big white dusting of spores in the kitchen of her <laughs> play set and yeah they'll do that cluster of oyster mushrooms sitting on there <laughs> well you know i guess there's much worse things to they, they could be interested at that age so that, yeah. that's pretty good that's awesome <laughs> most kids are like no i don't want anything to do with those yeah no. People will ask us, like, how do you get her to eat mushrooms? And it's like, well, actually, that's how we get her to eat other stuff sometimes. Like, we're like oh, look, there's there's mushrooms in there. And, and she gets all excited and wants to eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen the same with my niece. If I bring anything over with uh, morels in it, she's, oh. yeah, I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she will just, if there's morels, you got to get yours before she starts, because she'll just poke them in one right after another. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, that's, that's awesome. Keep them, keep them healthy, wealthy and uh, fed, right? That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, are you naturally outgoing or did you just kind of start doing the mushroom farm and found out you had to go and do this stuff and talk to people or what? Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I feel like I'm not, not that I don't know, never felt naturally outgoing. Um, like maybe always somewhat had a knack for like connecting with people in a sense, um, you know, more, I think in like individually, um, but it's just kind of grown into, you know, being able to get a little more comfortable talking to people. And um, also, you know, like, cause I look at the event, I get to take a lot of that off my, off of me and, you know, just bring in a lot of really wonderful people to, to do the presenting and talking. Um, awesome. So how is it when you when you talk to these folks too? I mean, do you do you have to kind of dance around and be real nice, or they just like everybody else? You just chit chat and it's simple going, or what? Well, you know, I think most yeah, I mean, most of them are just amazing, um, and then a lot of them seem really excited to see something like this happening up here. You know, so it's um, it's been really easy to get people interested and um, willing to participate. Um, so that's been pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Everybody's kind of been waiting for it to happen here. And 
Oh, um, that's good. The, you know, I, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that there's a lot of folks out there that are the same mind we are, you know, it's, it's easy to see people doing so well and assume that they're in this, this world of their own. And, you know, I, I try and relay it to as many folks as I can. And really that's, that's the point of this show too, is to show that the folks out there that are advocating for fungus and for the medicine that's out there are not the, you know, these, these great big icons or, or uh, anything like that. It's people like you and me and, where we tried to get healthy or we tried to uh, uh, do something good in our life to, to benefit it. And we ended up here with this community of people that are of like mind and it's just a great place to be, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel like I've got to connect with, you know, people I considered, uh, you know, heroes or idols, you know, in the, the mycology community. Uh, you know, I talk to everybody from, like I said, Alan Rockefeller and Dan Winkler and, uh, Langdon Cook um, is returning this year. Um, Robert Rogers, I have multiple of his books. And uh, it's amazing to, to be able to not only communicate with these people, but then to, to get them to come to this area. Um, Alex Dorr from the Mushroom Revival Group. Um, Roger Rabbit, like I had mentioned him before. I mean, there's just so many amazing people that I just have been able to like get in contact with and have these just really, you know, um, casual conversations with and that you get off the phone and just kind of in awe like did i really just have a phone call with <laughs> you know? right yeah yeah i can imagine so i mean i've i've had a couple incidents like that where i'll talk to folks and i'm just like well you know i thought this was going to be a lot harder than than it was and it's just so yeah. very natural you know we so. actually um through the the natural food store in in the area um got connected with um, Stamets' company as well. So um, they actually um, kind of like approached us and wanted to come to the event. So they're planning to attend this year, but seem to be really pushing to try and get us to get uh, Paul involved for, for next year. Seem to well, think that they might be able to get the planets to, to align, as they said. So, um, Do you yeah. have a bigger venue for the next one, or is this the biggest you get? <laughs> I think, you know, the, the plan would probably be to, you know, spread out throughout, you know, a couple of venues in town, which is kind of what we're already doing this year. Um, you know, we'll be primarily at the fairgrounds. We are also um, on Sunday going to jump over to uh, the Dungeness River Nature Center and Squim. That'll kind of be like the you know, a spot for doing some forays and stuff. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think you know we just have a really, really beautiful event center built on the waterfront down here, and we'd love to incorporate them, you know, as we grow. Um, so there's just a, probably gonna, you know, <laughs> versus finding one bigger venue, I think it'll kind of uh, grow into trying to incorporate, you know, multiple venues throughout the community and uh, hold different aspects of it here. We uh, talked to the college this year about getting involved and. Um, a couple of speakers in particular that we'd really like to to gear towards a, a presentation up there in the future. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm very excited for it. And I'm super grateful that you've uh, been able to communicate it, the when it's going to be and how to get into it. Cause man, I, I just can't wait to get up there and meet some more people and, and uh, get my uh, anti-social behind out there and start <laughs> being social is yeah need to <laughs> it was amazing you know because uh, you know last year we, we like i said we sold out of tickets really really quickly but um you know it was amazing how many people just came the day of and didn't even like inquire about tickets and stuff so really um another reason we inspired that you know kind of free access area so if you did show up um and not have tickets you know, there's at least still ways to participate and People can still come into the, the the merchants hall and the education barn and still get kind of an introduction to the world of mycology and uh, support some of our great vendors and. Uh, yeah, well, and maybe if you get to the point where you have uh, more people wanting to attend than you can support, you just start doing like everybody else and do a uh, Zoom uh, backup meetings or something. Yeah, how you'd set well, yeah. it up. But it would probably yeah. work it's like this <laughs> yeah yeah you know and we hope to have some pretty good coverage this year of the event to be able to broadcast some of the the talks later um you know especially that psilocybin panel i think that's going to be a pretty 
pretty special presentation. So we'd love to get that one recorded and able to be shared, um, you know, get that Definitely. information out there. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think we're going to see more and more of this because there, there's just so much information out there. And you can search all day until you're blue in the face on the Internet and not necessarily find exactly what you want. Yeah. But if you're in the right groups, you have the right people, the right knowledge, you can find those links to what you need. And I think this is just a real world version of that where you got everything in one place. It's yeah, well, you know, and people, you know, we wanted to make it fun for everyone. And so a lot, of, a lot of the, you know, presenters are really excited to come network with, you know, a lot of the people that are coming. And, um, you know, it's a great opportunity for attendees to network and vendors to network. And, um, you know, so not only a great place to come learn, but to come meet a lot of really like-minded uh, people who are interested in the field of mycology. And, um, you know, so that's what I'm really excited about is getting everybody together and, um, you know, seeing friendships build and grow and people, people get excited about new aspects and. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll kind of wind down here. And so why don't you go over the details of when the uh, festival will be, where people can find tickets and where people can find uh, Maddie's mushrooms and, and uh, get a hold of your great products. Yeah, so the, um, the festival is going to be in, in Port Angeles and Squim, Washington, so uh, out here on the Olympic Peninsula. It is Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival. Um, tickets uh, are on eventbrite.com. Um, we have uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, website. Uh, you can find uh, all of those. Um, you know, probably Facebook is the most common, but just Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival. Um, the primarily going to be you know the, most of the programming on saturday but we do have a you know friday saturday sunday camping um available we have a great merchants hall education barn um, a wonderful dinner and psilocybin panel that'll be happening on friday the 13th um, not the same time though the dinner is not the psilocybin panel yeah <laughs> no psilocybin in the dinner anyway good good <laughs> I figured as much. That probably was frowned upon in uh, public events these days. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, Saturday, just a, um, you know, a wide list of presentations on a variety of topics. Um, Sunday, we're going to kind of go into more of a, a workshop uh, and foray day where we'll have kind of some cultivation and dye making workshops and guided forays for people. Um yeah, and then Maddie's Mushrooms, you can find us on the, at the Port Angeles Farmer's Market every Saturday, um, online, um, Maddie's Mushrooms, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, I'll be sure to add all those uh, to, my, to my post for this when I go ahead and advertise it. So hopefully we'll get some links out there. You're probably pretty busy anyway, but uh, we'll, we'll send some more business your way if we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Love to connect with people and... Uh, yeah. Well, and again, it was uh, awesome having you on here, David. I'm sorry that uh, my buddy Andrew there got cut out and the signal cut out, but I think we did pretty well and uh, we covered quite a bit. And yeah, like I, said, I just can't wait to see you here at the festival. Maybe I'll be one of the few that recognizes you now, or maybe, yeah, now, maybe. maybe they'll all recognize you if they watch this here podcast. But, maybe he'll get a Olympic Peninsula Fungi Festival sticker at the Georgia Mushroom Festival. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Well, I greatly appreciate you coming on here and uh, hope that you have a good remainder of the day. We'll talk yeah, to you thank you. Really appreciate it. It's good chatting.